Um, yeah, I put this discussion consideration of action on alternatives on proposed ordinance on the second minute. So you each received, I guess in December, uh, a copy of a proposed ordinance from a citizen uh, who also came to speak on the proposed ordinance, uh, Terry Schofield. Um, and uh, Commissioner Roberts asked that I put this on the agenda for the board to discuss. Um, a couple of things that I want to point out is I did ask council to be prepared to talk about the legalities of the ordinance and I'll ask him to do that when we get to that point. But I, I want to clarify a few bits of information that were represented to you um, in your uh, regularly scheduled Wednesday meeting before this last week, the, this week. So last week, not yesterday, but last the Wednesday before. Mr. Schofield came in and uh, represented that he had attended a hearing in Yanville County on a similar or on an ordinance uh, regarding this same issue, and I was a little uh, shocked when he said they passed the ordinance. In fact, what he said was they passed the measure. He first referenced it as an ordinance, and secondly referenced it as a measure. And I did go back and look at the tape to make sure that what I'm telling you was accurate. Um, and I was a little shocked to hear that because there are laws in our state that require you to have a first reading and second reading and public hearing on an ordinance, and then when they go into effect, unless they're declared an emergency. So I asked Commissioner Roberts to find out because I didn't believe that they passed an ordinance or a measure based on what I know the law to be. And essentially, Commissioner Roberts was able to acquire what they did pass, which was not an ordinance or a measure. It was a resolution. Um, a resolution in their county is equivalent to a proclamation in our county. Uh, so what they passed for what you would be considering is a proclamation. Now, Mr. Schofield did represent that uh, he you know, was appreciative of what Yan Hill County would do and hope that you would consider doing the same, essentially, not in those words. Um, and so, uh, and you know, why we reference it in the ordinance and the measure, I'm not sure, unless uh, Yan Hill County wasn't pre uh, prepared to provide an ordinance or measure, and, and they did do it, and I'm unaware of it. But what I'm aware of, based on what Commissioner Roberts was able to acquire after our discussion, was that they passed a resolution. Uh, a resolution lists whereas is, and I want you to be aware that whereas is are not binding whatsoever in a resolution. This kind of state politically or administratively or legally why you may cho be choosing to do something. It's actually what you resolve is binding. In our, in our kind of case, we don't use resolutions. We use proclamations for those types of activities. But for board action, we use what are called board orders. So, and it's, it's more authoritative than a resolution. You're ordering the county administrator to execute something rather than you're resolving that the county commissioner or the county administrator can execute something as an example. So this wouldn't be something that you would do as an order because you wouldn't be ordering any action. You would be stating a, a position, which is what Yamhill County did. Um, based on Yamhill County's proclamation, I asked count, council to review. Um, there were some assertions made in the proclamation that really are uh, opinions rather than something that we can determine would be facts. And so council did amend what Yan Hill County did to prepare a draft, which I did send to each of you by email for your consideration if you choose to move forward with this. Um, if you choose to move forward with an ordinance, which is a whole different process and not what Yan Hill County did, uh, then I want uh, council to be prepared to explain to you what the issues are with what was proposed to you versus uh, procedurally what we would need to do. So. And before we get into any discussion on this, uh, Council, could you please go over the legalities of the ordinance so that before we get into discussion, so people have the ability to weigh with their knowledge the, the ordinance information versus the proclamation information? Um, happily. Um, so this, is, this was uh, a document titled the Second Amendment Preservation Ordinance. It was provided, I believe, by Mr. Schofield. Um, is it a request for the county to pass an ordinance as Daniel was saying, um, there, there are numerous, there's 17, uh, 21 um, whereases. Whereases are not binding, but they do state political, factual, or legal opinions. Um, I, I went through some of those whereases just to, to sort of, um, where I had some concerns that it would be the board asserting this as a factual or legal position. Um, for example, whereas number eight, uh, Mr. Schofield's document quotes uh, Justice Tom Cooley, who was on the Michigan Supreme Court, um, relating to uh, the right of local government to be absolute. Um, I did not review Michigan's um, constitution, but in Oregon, the right to local government is not absolute. Um, it's very limited under the Oregon constitution. 
to home, uh, you have to for counties at least you need to pass a home rule charter to have um, sort of home rule outside of the state laws. And then again, your your charter and your <coughs> county ordinances um, under the constitution are, are um, limited to only matters of county concern. Um, if it's a matter of, of statewide concern, even if we're a home rule county like we are, we still are required to follow the state rules. And so there isn't an absolute right for us to determine how the county and, and business within the county is operated. So I did have some current concerns with that. So there could be a simple issue as simple as Michigan's constitution and Oregon's constitution have different burgers and necessarily one may not apply to the other. Ab absolutely. Again, like I said, I, I did not review Michigan's constitution. I, I just reviewed Oregon's constitution and the, the interpretations of it really to that. That's basically the uh, state sovereignty concept with the constitution and how that would apply. Well, correct. Under Oregon's constitution, the state is the, the sort of uh, initial um, level of government. Um, there is, uh, we have what's called the administrative department of the uh, Oregon Constitution. Um, so it's a little different than the U.S. Constitution in the sense there are four branches of government in, in Oregon, the administrative department being one of them. Counties are considered administrative bodies within the Oregon Constitution. Um, we are allowed as a county, due to an amendment to the Constitution, to adopt our own home rule charter, but it is limited to only matters of county concern. Um, we still are required under the Oregon Constitution to follow matters, when, when, as the state says, of statewide um, concern. And then looking at sort of matters of federal concern, we do a bit into the U.S. Constitution and, and issues of federal preemption, where the federal law um, will preempt any state or local law um, if it's considered a matter reserved to or, or occupied by the federal government. Um, there, were, you know, there, there are various other statements. Um, uh, one of my concerns. Um, in, Again, number 13 is he asserts that uh, ancillary rights related to the Second Amendment include manufacturing, transferring, buying, or selling firearms. Um, I wasn't able to find any support for this concept of ancillary firearms rights under the Second Amendment. Um, additionally, I would, uh, that, that's also a concern I would have with uh, number 16, where uh, the 16 where he, uh, he cites the uh, Oregon Constitution's um, sort of right to uh, that people to, to bear arms. Again, uh, in trying to incorporate this concept of manufacturing and transferring as a right under the amendment, uh, I didn't find any support for that under the Oregon Constitution either. Um, but, but again, it, it, these, are, these are more uh, opinion statements, which gets, kind of gets outside of what a whereas is. Um, uh, my next concern was, uh, in previous where my next concern is on 18, um, where I was 18 specifically, and he, Mr. Schofield's document references the Ninth and Tenth Amendment um, as being incorporated by the Fourteenth Amendment. And the Ninth and Tenth Amendment are relevant because in previous ones, uh, the Ninth Amendment is about reserving powers not reserved to the federal government referred to the state. And the Tenth Amendment is powers, uh, any other powers reserved to the people. Um, and he uses the Ninth and the Tenth Amendment to sort of talk about this, these ancillary rights to firearms, the manufacturing, the transferring, et cetera. Um, just as a point of law, the Ninth and Tenth Amendment have not been called, it, what's called incorporation. So the Fourteenth Amendment um, created certain due process rights. The U.S. Supreme Court um, has determined that not everything within the Bill of Rights or the U.S. Constitution is applied to the states. Um, so it's called selective incorporation. So they've gone through the various um, amendments through the Bill of Rights and determined, the U.S. Supreme Court hasn't determined which of those rights are passed through to the state through the Fourteenth Amendment. Specifically, the Ninth and Tenth Amendment had not been incorporated as being uh, as applied to the states, and so there's not a reservation to the people under the federal constitution of other rights um, as applied to the state. If that makes sense, <laughs> um, it, it's it, constitutional law is a fairly technical um, and, and can at times um, dense area of the law. And so I'm, I'm trying to sum it up to to, to some extent um, and get out of the, the legalese. Um, again, uh, the, the traditional whereas's are, are a lot of um, you know, opinion <coughs> statements about we disagree with things that the state or the federal government has done, and, and they're political statements that, um, again, are political statements. And, and uh, just moving into uh, the actual text of the ordinance itself, um, I'm looking at what he is uh, labeled paragraph 24. Um, the uh, the Sub one of paragraph four um, says the right of the people in Jackson County to keep and bear arms is originally understood. 
Um, I, I guess that is a difficult um, statement to say as originally understood. Again, that's an opinion, and it, it reserves the right of the Oregon Supreme Court and the U.S. Supreme Court to interpret the Constitution. Um, the U.S. Supreme Court, both under the U.S. Constitution and then the Oregon Constitution is applied to the Oregon Supreme Court. The judicial power is reserved to the Supreme Court and the Oregon Supreme Court, and the judicial power includes the ability to interpret and determine what the meaning of the Constitution and whether various laws are. And so this, uh, this sort of concept that we're adopting an ordinance um, limiting the interpretation of the Second Amendment in Oregon's, um, can, uh, can the Oregon Constitution's right to bear arms as originally understood is an attempt, is essentially usurping the judicial role that those constitutions give to the Supreme Court and the Oregon Supreme Court. Um, sub two of that, um, the people to freely manufacture, transfer, sell, or buy farms, which are designed for the same um, purposes. Again, um, th there I had concerns that I talked before that I, I wasn't able to find any support legally for the concept that these are, these are fundamental rights as well. Um, you know, the Constitution talks about you know, bearing arms, it does not talk about manufacturing, transferring, selling, those types of activities. Um, moving into paragraph 26, again, um, it's declaring that certain uh, things are the supreme law of the land and anything, in, in, in the supreme law of the land, so it declares that the 2nd, 9th, 10th, and 14th Amendments uh, the U.S. Constitution in Articles 1, Article 1, Sections 27 and 23 of the state constitution shall be regarded as um, the supreme law of the land and anything violating the right to bear arms or the ancillary firearms rights is unconstitutional. Again, that's usurping the judicial role reserved to the, under the constitutions to the U.S. Supreme Court and the Oregon Supreme Court. Um, I, it's my opinion that the Jackson County Board of Commissioners doesn't have the authority to interpret the, the constitutions and whether or not um, particular ordinances violate, or particular state or federal laws violate those ordinances. Is that reserved to the Supreme Court? Again, it's reserved to the, to the, to the, to the various Supreme Courts. Um, moving on to the next one, um, we will not authorize or appropriate government funds to the infringement, uh, to any rules that infringe, this is uh, 27 sub 1, to, uh, to enforcing any rules that may infringe upon the right to keep or bear arms. Um, again, the, uh, the, the authorization or the appropriation of government funds is, of course, um, within Jackson County as the Board of Commissioners' right, but I do have some concerns that we um, may be violating um, state law if, for example, we, um, if there is a, sta a state or a federal law mandating that our sheriff does something and that we um, specifically um, don't appropriate funds to that particular function as opposed to a general uh, authorization of funds to the sheriff to enforce laws. Um, I would have some concern because the sheriff as um, an elected official has his own discretion um, under Oregon budgetary law on how he's going to appropriate his funds. If we start trying to, we essentially lump sum the sheriff to a large extent, you can correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. We give him appropriation. We give him an appropriation and he then spends that appropriation to enforce laws. If we attempt to mandate that he not use that appropriation in certain ways, we are infringing upon his rights as a sheriff to uh, his discretion as a sheriff. It's, those are uh, constitutional provisions within the state of Oregon that he's granted. Yeah, he, he is, the, the office of sheriff is created under the Oregon Constitution. And so those, those aren't just laws, those are constitutional yes. laws under the state of Oregon that grants him those authorities to be able to do that. And they have been tested in court as yes. well. It's not just that it's stated. It's, been decided. I just wanted to clarify the, the strength of those of his uh, position in this. And so the types of laws that it's in 28, uh, what's labeled 28, so we don't really um, and, and spend any money enforcing registration requirements. Again, I, I haven't found anything that could make a registration for an existing lawful, requiring registration um, for all existing lawfully owned firearms to be an, an unconstitutional provision. Um, currently, there is no law that says everyone has to register firearms um, that I'm aware of or that I could find, but so there hasn't been any court who's had an opportunity to determine whether or not that would be an unconstitutional provision. Um, however, that my concern would be is that um, it likely probably would not um, because uh, of sort of various other court cases. The court has found that there is an individual right to keep and bear arms, but it didn't, they did not seem to go so far as to say that the state 
had no ability to regulate that area. Um, again, this is uh, sort of another prohibition. We won't spend any money. Um, we won't spend any money enforcing things when we send out of firearms or quote unquote assault rifles. Prohibition against certain types of clips. Um, uh, registration of background requirements. Restrictions on uh, possession, carrying, or transportation of lawfully uh, acquired firearms. Again, these may be fe uh, federal, covered by federal or state law um, that preempt the area. As I originally spoke about, um, we only can uh, we can only regulate with, with matters of county concern, um, based upon sort of where the Oregon Supreme Court has looked at what is a matter of statewide concern versus what is a matter of limited to county concern. Uh, my opinion would be, again, though it has not been um, decided yet, is that likely firearm restrictions would be likely found to be a matter of state statewide concern. So we couldn't um, determine that within our county, firearms based upon sort of other cases I've read, are, uh, firearms within the county are different than firearms outside of the county. Um, moving on to section 33. Um, you know, it acknowledges certain um, provisions of, of existing law, and that doesn't, an acknowledgement of law isn't necessarily a, it, 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 an ordinance doesn't acknowledge law, an ordinance makes law. And so I would have concerns about us acknowledging law. I don't think it would be legally incorrect, it just wouldn't be procedurally correct in the context of an ordinance. Um, and then finally, um, in section 34 gave me some concerns. Again, the, it shall be the duty, duty of the sheriff to determine whether um, firearms laws um, violate the U.S. or Oregon Constitution. This is label 34F. Again, the, the sheriff doesn't have the authority to determine constitutionality. That is reserved to the uh, U.S. Supreme Court and the Oregon Supreme Court under the two respective constitutions. <laughs> and my, my final concern would be uh, sort of the penalty section. Um, and it essentially creates a county violation. It criminalizes compliance with state and federal law. And, and I would have some concerns if the county attempted to essentially criminalize um, compliance with state and federal law. I feel that we would likely be found to be preempted in that area um, by either um, the Oregon and the US Supreme Court uh, based upon the, the concepts of uh, federal or state preemption of local laws. You've heard about the uh, proclamation, and you've heard about some of the uh, legalities of the ordinance itself. Do you have, do you have any questions of staff? And let's, let's divide it right now into the proclamation first. Do you have any questions of staff on the proclamation? I think our staff moves the proclamation is, is attempting to enforce it. My, my question is really come with the ordinance. Well, I have tons to add, but um, yeah, I understand if that's your question. Do you have any questions of staff no. at this point on the proclamation uh -huh. or the verbiage or anything? No, let's move over to the ordinance. Do we have any questions of staff on the regarding the ordinance of what Joel just presented? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, there, there's just a couple here. First of all, the ancillary rights you mentioned, um, I know they're not delineated in, in the Second Amendment itself. Is there any case law that you could find? Uh, not, not, that, not that would sort of create the, 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 these ancillary rights as being rights guaranteed by the Constitution. Okay. Does that make? Yeah. I well, mean, that, we, we have laws related to the manufacture of firearms. Um, but you have to be for manufacturing and distributing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, what is it, FF, Federal Firearms, FFL. Um, so there are rules and, law and statutes related to the manufacturing. I couldn't find any case law that sort of had incorporated those as being fundamental rights guaranteed by a constitution. So no holding that sort of established rights under the Second Amendment that are ancillary rights as they listed in there? N not that I was able to find. Um, and I don't know either. I just... Again, again I, 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 I did some research. Um, uh, I, there may be cases out there, but I was unable to find any cases. Um, that sort of created this concept of a, a constitutional right to manufacture and transfer arms. Okay. Well, then I think you covered pretty much anything that I would have a question on going through that bit by bit. Okay. Um, question of staff on the ordinance. 
Uh, my research has not been able to find any county in the state of Oregon that has even started the process on such an ordinance as Mr. Schofield has asserted during his, uh, his testimony to the board during these different times. Uh, have either of you been able to find any, any ordinance being started or the process within the state of Oregon with any other county? Well, what I, was, what I have heard is that Lalawa County had passed an ordinance. Um, I didn't contact Lalawa County, uh, so I'm not, I wasn't able to verify that or not. My guess is, you know, if they passed an ordinance, as I said, there's a legal procedure to go through, which requires a first reading and a second reading and public hearing. I would assume they wouldn't adopt it as an, as an emergency, uh, but they may have if they did adopt an ordinance. Um, I am, as far as I know, the other uh, county, Yamhill County, did not pass an ordinance. They didn't consider an ordinance, and as I said in my uh, previous explanation, they they passed was a resolution, essentially resolving that they support people's rights to keep and bear arms and no infringement on those rights. Essentially, I think I provided you a copy of actually what was resolved. And what I've seen that came to me from the Firearms Federation is Willow well, County did pass an ordinance. Wheeler County, Yamhill County, Klamath, Douglas and Lane have passed resolutions. And the, and not blaming Mr. Schofield for this, but Firearms Federation, uh, the title of the presentation said, these counties have passed ordinances. I mean, they've presented it as ordinances. And when you click on them, they're resolutions, except for Wall Wallawa. Can you get a copy? Yeah, I have it on the computer. So then Wallawa has gone through first step review and it, it has it gone just, through the entire process? The document just says an ordinance. Can you get a copy of that to distribute to the board? Sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, we, we can actually get a copy of all of those if you would like us to and distribute them to the board. I, I just wasn't aware of you know, it. Uh, all, I, all I was aware of is what you were asked to do and what was presented to you. Uh, and the board has not directed us in any specific direction. But if you would like a copy of those, we can have Joel uh, get a hold of the county. Right. Okay. 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 I can give them to you. I will. Yeah, you I will. Okay. Okay. So, Withstanding legal review, the ordinance is presented sounds like it has some flaws and it wouldn't most likely uh, withstand the review in Oregon. I, 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 would, I, would, I would agree with that statement. Okay. Now, would an ordinance, now, how do I phrase this? If we were to create an ordinance that in our opinion wouldn't withstand legal review, uh, no, I know, so what if? By what authority would this legal re would, would we have to be able to create this ordinance, and or and to be able to protect the Second Amendment rights versus what the state is uh, proposing to do? If these laws come into play, essentially, if we write this ordinance and we move forward with it, how strong this ordinance can be, and what's the reality of it being able to protect Second Amendment rights for the citizens here in Jackson County if the state proceeds with what they choose to do? Um, so I guess it, it's difficult to provide legal analysis and hypothetical ordinances. Um, we would essentially, we have the authority to regulate under the Oregon Constitution, and because we're a home of the county, we have to regulate to, the authority to pass ordinances related to matters of countywide concern. And so I would have some concerns about how we would draft an ordinance related to firearms that was limited to matters of countywide concern. Um, I haven't seen one. My opinion is this one is, is probably goes beyond the matters of county-wide concern and the matters of either federal or state concern. Um, but if we could come up with a matter of, of somehow firearms were, were really, uh, they limited the ordinance to matters of county concern, um, I think that it likely could withstand some review. Um, but my, my legal opinion is um, Firearms and protecting the Second Amendment likely are going to be matters of state-wide concern, um, as I said earlier, or even to the matters of federal, if the federal government thinks federal preemption would prohibit us from passing an ordinance um, that violates the provisions, or, or I should say prevents us, we can, we can do what we want, but an ordinance that we pass that sort of uh, conflicted with federal, federal law would be found to be an unenforceable ordinance. 
Um, but if we could come up with somehow an ordinance that was strictly related to management county concern, I doubt that we could, but that might be able to survive a challenge. And the other point, too, is if we could come up with an ordinance that was a county concern and not a state, wide, or federal concern, it can't be more or it can be less restrictive than state law. So if a state law passed uh, that was that did restrict rights, our ordinance can't be less restrictive. The county can't, be, based on our home which are, be less restrictive than state law. We can be more restrictive than state law. And, and let's add an just, uh, if, just a moment, please. That's a constitution. Joel, getting back to where I was at, where I was going with this, um, you made a good point saying, we, if this is a hypothetical what if, we don't have or the knowledge to go draft an ordinance on what the state could do this next legislative cycle because we don't know what the state is doing this next legislative cycle at this point in time. A absolutely. So, um, so to be able to draft an ordinance at this point in time, not understanding what the state is actually doing, may cause more legal problems than what we may understand at this point, or to give the state the ability to write state laws around our ordinance and basically, if we did have something that could withstand legal review, it would basically write it preempted immediately. Uh, absolutely. We, we could draft an ordinance, again, and we've had this discussion on things. We could draft an ordinance based upon our current knowledge of the state law. Um, again, it, w it would take some time. I just don't know enough about um, the particular area. But if the state were to pass a, a state law um, within the same area, um, even unintentionally, the state were to pass a state law that, uh, uh, related to firearms, it would likely preempt our ordinance. Um, so it's difficult to sort of pass an ordinance guessing, um, not just on firearms or Second Amendment, but really on any areas, trying to guess what may happen in the future. Um, and so uh, we, we've talked about this on other things. Uh, we, can, we, we can draft it based upon what we know today. Okay. You, you know, I'm not going to confuse this, but... Commissioner Roberts talked to me a lot about wanting to make sure that the people's voice is heard, and, and you know, I talked with her about the opportunity to pass a resolution, as the most, the most, most of the counties have done. And in our case, that's called a proclamation. Uh, and um, there's nothing that that would interfere with state law or federal law if you all proclaim that you support these particular rights. And the way, you know, Joel pointed out the legal issues, but politically, you know, because they're not binding, you, you know, you can pretty much state whatever you want. Uh, but it, it's it's what is ordered or resolved or claimed. Uh, in this case, uh, you're not ordering anyone to do anything. You're stating a position. That's why a proclamation is appropriate, or a resolution in other counties is what they call it. Uh, so you you, know, you do still have the option to do something, uh, and you have the option of directing us to try to prepare an ordinance that council. Would, but 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 I think he's pretty much explained. The, the likelihood of being able to do that is, is minimal. And we really don't know, we have ideas of what the bills look like to be presented to the state. And we understand that there's a super majority in the current uh, makeup of the state legislature that is likely to move some of these bills forward. However, until they go through committee and get marked up, we have no idea what the reality is of these bills are going to be coming out the back side. And there's really no advantage to attempt to preempt what's coming out of Salem. Um, you know, I hear some people say that this needs to be done right now because we're trying. I don't think that there's any real advantage to, to attempting to do that. I mean, something would be as as valid and impactful um, as a reaction, I guess. It doesn't want to be reactionary, but as something that you're trying to preempt what they're uh, what they're doing in Salem. I, I mean, from a legal perspective, we can't preempt right. the state. So um, even if we're, it, it, this isn't a case that we're, we're first in line, so we're first in time, first in line. Um, Timing-wise, um, whether and with the state passes a state law, before we pass our ordinance or after we pass our ordinance, it has, it's going to have the same legal effect on our ordinance. So there, we wouldn't have any preemption effect by passing an ordinance beforehand. Right. So the, best, the best we can do, if I understand it, is if we understand the state, is, the state law is going into effect, and there's something that might be missing out of that law or something, we might be able to put something in place prior to the rather grandfather type situation uh, so that we don't, uh, so we have something in place that might give certain protections. But until we know what that looks like, um, I don't think it'd be prudent to put that out. But, yeah. 
Yeah, and I, and I mainly mentioned that just to kind of address that concern that has been uh, addressed to me. Okay. Um, it sounds like we're not looking at an ordinance, if I'm hearing things correctly, is that correct? I, I would have to say, you know, first of all, I want to say I, I applaud Mr. Schofield's efforts. I think this is something that, that needs to be uh, looked at and, and needs to, some action to take place. I'm just afraid that the, the ordinance isn't going to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. And it has you know, potential pitfalls that have greater consequences to us uh, and may eventually and ultimately have no legal effect anyway um, and may marginalize us in future uh, discussions. In, in a proclamation, we state our unequivocal position uh, on the Second Amendment uh, and we send that message. And the people's voices are heard and our position is heard. And uh, I, I think that is the, the, the better course. Well, about the ordinance, I, I agree. I've looked at it, and um, we are setting penalties for crimes that aren't in existence yet. And, and I look at elected officials, and all they could do is pass more laws, and that's what we'd be doing here, and I'm against that. We have the Constitution, and it's one sentence, and we're replacing it with six pages of the case of this. And um, I appreciate the effort of, and the concern towards the uh, Second Amendment. I appreciate the many citizens have contacted me about it and the counties that are stepping forth saying with their proclamations what they stand for in that Second Amendment um, constitutional stand. I don't consider it politically and I don't, I'm not a um, constitutional attorney either, but I don't think it belongs to the Supreme Court, it belongs to the people. And the people want their Second Amendment rights and as elected official I will stand on the Second Amendment rights, and I feel that our, can't speak for him, but our county sheriff has also said he would. Um, as as far as putting together a proposal or a uh, proclamation, the administration prepared us a draft, and you guys have a copy of that, and I take exceptions of this one too. There are um, unquantified allegations of things that may, we can't, I don't want to enumerate or... Can, can I just clarify real quickly? That was not our opinions, mine or Joel's. That was Yamhill County's. That was taken from yes. Yamhill County's proclamation. And we did point out, I point out to all of you in email, that there are those kinds of things. Yes, so, and so, so I, I don't know if this is time for, but I looked at all the proclamations the counties have put together. Because I want to join the counties. I want to join our citizens in stating, we will stand for your Second Amendment rights. And um, you guys can look at this and see if it's anything you could stand for. Um, it just states that initially, where in certain events now occurring, it becomes necessary for the people of Jackson County to reaffirm and support the protections and rights granted by the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of Oregon. All public officials swear an oath to these instruments and in keeping with that oath, it is imperative to note that in the matter of the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America and the absolutely clear language of the Constitution of the State of Oregon, that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Attempts at incremental infringement shall be construed as an overt disregard of the undeniable protections and rights of these aforementioned documents. And it has some other whereas. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's, just, it's just the reason um, I feel we are um, in need to do this and, and whatever you guys want to do. Okay, so this, is, this particular uh, proclamation is something you drafted? Between okay. taking the positives from all the other counties' um, documents. Okay, so I'm going to reel it back in just a little bit here. Uh, We've talked about, at this point in time, I think I just heard you correctly, that an ordinance isn't necessarily the direction we want to go. Okay, so, uh, council, we're not going to be moving forward in ordinance at this point in time. But, um, I think preserving that for future, if necessary, might not be a bad thing. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, it's not an absolute, but it potentially is going to be in the future. Now, the, uh, let's move over to the uh, proclamation concept. Commissioner Roberts has just given us a copy of a uh, proclamation that she has. Uh, 
making a decision on that at this point in time without reading it in, in, in depth and understanding what you've written, uh, I think would be not smart. In my opinion, I think we need to take a good look at it. I personally, I know I'm a strong advocate for Second Amendment rights. Uh, I think it's a strong uh, thing. But at the same time, I think that uh, the people need to understand uh, very clear that this is nothing more than a position statement. What happens at the state still happens at the state, and this has no bearing on that. The, the people that they need to lobby, in my opinion, would be uh, Senator Bates and Representative Buckley on this particular issue. Uh, from my understanding, the rest of the representatives of senators within Jackson County that represent portions of Jackson County are already strong Second Amendment supporters. So I would encourage those people to spend their time with Bates and Buckley to be able to tell them the importance of their Second Amendment rights within Jackson County. So um, let's give us some time to go ahead and read this proclamation and uh, set it up for a uh, work session. Uh, Is there any? You know, I just read through this real quick, but I didn't get a chance to see this before. But, um, is there any way that maybe staff could go through this uh, and we'll track changes and send it back? I mean, I'm seeing some things that just aren't technically correct. Well, that's what I was going to say. Uh, is I want to set the all up. public officials swear an oath. It's not that's not correct. It's all constitutional public officers that swear an oath. And for example, I'm a public official, but I don't swear an oath because the Constitution doesn't require me to. It requires those delineated in the Constitution to swear an oath. Joel's a public official, but he's a county council, and he's required to swear an oath because he's an attorney, not because <coughs> he's elected. So um, there are probably other little things that maybe we could, you know, clarify if we could have some time to go through it. We can put it back on the agenda. And that'll give you all some time to go through it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. We set up a work session, and staff can review this for accuracy, and then we can go through it to make sure that the whereases represent uh, the position of the board as a whole as we move forward. Um, so I encourage everybody to take a good look at it and let's go ahead and make sure it's uh, council is technically accurate also because the last thing I'll see is us taking a position statement which is basically what we're doing and have uh, spots in it where people can shoot holes in it in Salem. And if this is going to, uh, in my opinion, diminish some of our ability in the testimony phases as this uh, you could technically have you know nowhere nowhere as this I mean really if you look at what this proclaims that's really what the key is uh, and it does proclaim the same thing as the uh, Anhill County okay. that, that's correct right? is this um, except we didn't do the uh, their their background check details. except for these are where is what I'm saying it's just um, on the on the proclaiming part uh, on, on your draft, this right here is the same thing that Yanville County proclaimed, right? If I remember correctly, I didn't bring um, it. I have Yanville County, I don't know. Well, let's look at that for the work section. Okay. Yeah, that's where I how we do it. And uh, but one thing I want to consider as we move forward with this is to make sure that we don't diminish our, our voice as these bills go forward with the state because we will be providing testimony most likely at some point in time during hearings at the state level. And I want us to be able to testify to be able to do the best representation for Jackson County to support your Second Amendment rights and not be allowed at the table. So let's, let's keep that in mind also. <coughs> I was just pointing out it proclaims the same thing because that's what was represented to the board that okay. they did. At least Mr. Schofield would like you to follow the Anhill County suit. And this proclaims, regardless of the whereas, is the same thing as Anhill County. Okay. Yes. okay. Uh, 